salutations. Uh, curious, which one of these? I have many of these things. Which one of them do you like better? This one or this one? I tend to hold things in my hand and, you know, it just uh, helps me keep going and keeps me focused. So, anyway, um, let me know which one you like better. Uh, we're going to, I'm on a different trip kind of right now. I'm more into quality versus quantity. And as far as the content on this channel, the YouTube channel especially, uh, there's a lot of stuff there. And some of them are kind of faster videos, I call them fast blasts. But sometimes they need to be a little details are missed and some things I'll go back on and want to kind of reiterate on a little bit. <clears throat> this one would be from a video that is on uh, Patreon only that was called Circulating Beans and the Alceti Program. Now my interest in the Alceti is that that's called the Optical Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, which is a, a branch of SETI that you may not have heard before. And what has always interested me in that is that SETI itself, searching for radio signals in other galaxies, in, 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 in this solar, in this galaxy, to me is a bit antiquated, in terms that the radio signals themselves will scintillate before they can be picked up, and you know that's just not the best way. As to where lasers would not, and optical lasers and that kind of circulating light beams would not scintillate the same. That would give us a way much more to detect these type of type 1 civilizations, type 2, type 3, that might be out there in the galaxy. So that's just a way of something I wanted to address with that and kind of tie that into what is now called superluminal communications, which can also be called uh, propagation of data uh, in backwards in time, actually, too, also uh, pro propagation of data, which is sending time back, sending messages back through time. And that is being done, just look for example, the technology being developed by Dr. Ron Mallet from the University of Connecticut, melanin dominant scientist. All right, he's the brother that said that his uh, father had died when he was young and he was trying to construct a time device. But actually, what he's come up with is something that is a device that's using circulating light lasers. Okay, and I'll put up a couple of pictures of that. So that does take us into the theory of circulating light beams. All right, now circulating light beams. Um, takes us also into the time travel and time science, which is very interesting because these circulating light beams can be used to generate closed time-like curves. Go back on the YouTube channel and check out all the videos I've done over time science, time technology. I try to come from really the science of it and things that can be proven through science and a few things we see in the in our um, in our in our home or in our market also. I think that's when you first see it. You know, like I said before, when disclosure happens, it's going to happen in the lab. So anyway, as a matter of fact, some of these circulating light beams have also been connected to not just time travel, but also the containment of charged plasma used to actually help construct crop circles. So there's other things going on there that might concern with these uh, circulating light beams. You know, it's interesting, but the the word of Doctor, the work of Doctor Mallet shows work concerning the circulating light beams and also check out uh, Dr. Wong oh gosh he was he's not in Connecticut he's uh, Dr. Wong uh, Japan he's doing tons of ex doing tons of work on the propagation of data backwards through time he's done a lot of that so check him out too these are people that are actually scientists that are in the sector dealing with this type of technology so anyway, um, when dealing with Alceti, something else I'll throw in there, I'll put a picture of it up, which is the, uh, oh goodness, make sure I get the name of this right. Um, <clears throat> it's the submarine, submarine Fiber Optic Repeater, which is a type of device they're putting in the submarines looking for signals in the sea. In the other video I mentioned that, what are they looking for? Is it an underground base type of thing? You know, or under, under sea, underwater base, something like what Preston Dennett talks about in his many books. You know, it's food for thought, if nothing else. Um, <laughs> oh, this is something here that, that is worth mentioning. The International Academy of Aeronautics, IAA, which is a SETI permanent committee. All right, and what that is is actually people that have to do that have they actually have detection, uh, post detection protocols. So if anything is actually found as far as with SETI or with uh, OSETI. They have to actually report to these people, and I bet you've never heard of these people. 
I'll put actually a sign of their uh, emblem up and everything. It's quite interesting. So these are things, I'll put a lot of pictures up with this, more that comes with most of them, all right? But these are for you to look this stuff up. Stop the picture, pause it, look the stuff up, write it down, do your own research. That's the only reason I'm doing this, to keep people awake. People are talking about being awake right now and things of that nature. <clears throat> Be aware of the things that are happening around us scientifically. So, um, okay, um, you know, that's really most of it. Oh, taking this back too, with the, with the circulating light beams and things of that nature. This also takes us into what is the time reactor that I've talked about a lot. That actually I've only seen the Edison Institute put up schematics of and they try to get a patent on it. And outside of that, I haven't seen anything different. But that reactor itself involves um, a, a, a magnetic base along with actually a bubble which is injected a gaseous agent into this bubble. And then they've got an array of lasers that fire into the bubble to advance and retard the, the, to the bubble, the time bubble itself. So that's something else just to, that kind of ties us into this technology a little bit, dealing with light beams. And I think it just needs to be really, really focused on and expo expanding our modalities and taking this and cross-referencing this a little bit to another video I had done which is over fast radio bursts and what I think those are and there's some of those that have been repeating that they're finding um, fascinating what I picked up always is that these because I didn't know what they were I woke up and I'm getting this information about that to where I start talking about it and researching it you know but anyway I'm getting that these are actually when we deal with the miniaturization of uh, contact, which I'm going to do a video over that, which meaning when we start dealing with civilizations that are not just type 0 or 1, we're dealing with type 2 and 3, where they're going in, they're actually using the uh, fabric of space itself for their prime power source. When dealing with that and the whole theory of how uh, more ch microchips can go on, more transitions, resistors, whatever can go on to, a microchip per year, how they keep getting smaller and smaller. When we start going into that, that takes us not just into the nano, nano, but into the pico. And we're dealing with civilizations that may have become miniaturized. Just because they're advanced doesn't mean they can't be possibly be microscopic, for another example, you know, for, for like, lack of a better word. But when dealing with that concept, and in the thought of a Dyson spear, or a... Uh, Death Star that is over an actual solar system that's over the over the the star and over the planets itself. When dealing with that type of engineering feat and thinking of that and dealing with beings that could be on the Pico and things like what Dr. Dr. Lear found with the implants that he found at the carbon nanotubes in there could expand could stretch miles. So you think that's just in something uh, an implant. So think about a civilization that has gone into the Pico that has a Dyson Sphere around their solar system. That means they're going to be exploring inner space. Like my joke I've said before, uh, Martin Shore, Short and uh, Dennis Quaid, that movie Inner Space. There's been other movies about that too. But anyway, just seriously, think about that and how they would actually explore the solar system, how contact would occur through a species that's on the Pico like that. That also takes us into some things I've said about some of the viruses and how the virus itself looks like several circuits. The bacterial phage doesn't even look, doesn't look natural. The symmetry of it doesn't look natural. Talk about self-reproducing alien devices. That may be one, the bacterial phage. Anyway, <clears throat> going too far on that, but this is just something I want people to look up. Please look this up for yourself. Connect the dots. Um, I want to thank everybody that watched these videos, the people on Patreon that have kept this going on. Once again, it's just to expand your own research. Talk amongst yourselves and the group on the platform here. Reach out. This is about kind of a shift in consciousness that is going on. Us staying more awake and awake of our environment, definitely. And I like the science that keeps it real. Peace.